rather just, I'd rather wait just in, you know, because it's the public.
to speak clearly um, into the microphone. Um, are you sure? I'm not seeing me on the screen yet. There we are. <coughs> All right, the time is 7.23 p.m. We're a little late due to some technical difficulties. We're going to get right into this public hearing. We have two public hearings scheduled. Uh, the first is on a requested use of $120,000 from the American Rescue Plan to make critical improvements to the Land Use Department. So. I just want to officially, we're, we're opening this public hearing up. And what time did I say, 7.23? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So 7.23, the public hearing is open. This has been uh, duly published in uh, the River East, the legal notice, as well as posted online um, for this public hearing. So if, is there any one in the audience that would like to comment? on this public hearing. Okay, well, nothing. And just to be clear for those who w would be trying to join on Zoom, uh, we're letting people know to watch the meeting on YouTube. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so with that, um, we don't need a motion. We can close the public hearing at 725, seeing as there are no public comments. And we can open up the second public hearing at 725 now. This is on the proposed right to farm ordinance. This also was published in the River East. And I'll just read the legal notice here, Wednesday, August 17th, 2022 at 7.20 p.m. Pursuant to sections 406 and 503I of the town charter, the Portland Board of Selectmen shall hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 17th, 2022 at 7.20 p.m. in the Buck Foreman Community Room 265 Main Street, Portland, Connecticut, to obtain public comments and questions, both orally and in writing, on the proposed town ordinance, <coughs> Right to Farm. So it does say public access through Zoom link A um, as well. But um, so, yes, yeah, so we can open up this public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment on the Right to Farm proposed ordinance? No. Okay, so, uh, so. I'm here to show support in a positive way. Okay, so we have uh, two members of the audience, uh, citizens that um, don't, you know, are, are here to support but not to comment. Okay. Um, is there any comments on the chat at all? No. Okay. So seeing no Comments, we can close the public hearing at 7.27 p.m. And a regular Board of Selectmen meeting will start at 7.30 p.m.
Okay. Okay. All right. The time is 7.30, and I'll now call this regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. The first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you all please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> The next item on tonight's agenda is the approval of minutes from the regular meeting of July 20th, uh, 2022. Did everyone uh, review those minutes? Yes. All right. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second that. Thank you, Sean and Bobby. Is there any, uh, are there any errors, changes, or omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. The next item is the acceptance of tonight's agenda. I do have one change this evening. Under new business, um, the refunds of excess payments, which are item B, will, uh, will become item C. And there will be a new item B, and this will be another resolution. And this is to enter into an agreement with um, DEEP. And this has to do with the uh, contract to sign for the um, track at the high school. All right. So, seeing, uh, so can I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I'll make so, a motion. Second. Okay. Mike uh, made the motion and uh, John seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Under communications and correspondence, I do have one. I know Ralph, myself, and, and Mike Hernandez were able to attend the Portland High School Bo Boys Golf Team uh, Awards Banquet, and it was a it was a really nice event. Uh, they have a an amazing team that has really put Portland on the map uh, for golf and so it was nice to be able to congratulate the team in person they have a wonderful team and, and a wonderful coach so uh, Ralph would you like to read the proclamation we gave them sure <clears throat> certificate of congratulations may it be known this certificate has been presented by the Portland Board of Selectmen to recognize and honor the Portland High School boys golf team on their outstanding season and achievement of winning the 2022 Division IV State Championship. By its extraordinary efforts, this dynamic team has won the title in 2021, 2018, 2017, and in 2016. Prior to the 2016 victory, the championship was won by Portland 30 years ago in 1986. To their credit, without the, without the excellent performance, dedication, and commitment of these young students and coaches, this victory would not have been possible. So it's for uh, Joseph Santavenier, the golf coach, Jennifer Bell, the athletic coordinator, the players Owen Brunk, Eli Evanson, Joseph Lamafa, Aiden Peterson, Giovanni Desenza, Benjamin Fechtau, Quinn Lipinski and Luke Stennett. Congratulations to the coaches, parents, players, and the high school on this outstanding achievement. We commend them highly for their display of sportsmanship and leadership. Presented on this seventh day of August in the year 2022 by Ryan J. Curley, first selectman, town of Portland, Connecticut, and the Portland Board of Selectmen, John H. Dillon, Michael S. Hernandez, Robert W. Hetrick, Jr., Sean P. Manning, Michael A. Pelton, and Ralph R. Zampano. Great, thank you, Ralph. And congratulations again to our uh, Portland boys golf team. It's kind of it's kind of hard to admit this. I was on the, the golf team for four years at Portland High School. My freshman year was the inaugural year of the team. <laughs> Forty-seven years ago. You paved the way. 
for the current. I was I was nowhere. I congratulate these guys because our team was not what it is now. Let me tell you. But no, it's it, it's yeah. great that it's it's continuing, it's thriving, and it's doing quite well. So congratulations, guys. All right. Well, we'll move on to public comment. Is there anyone in the audience? Is there anyone in the chat? And I do want to mention again that we have technical difficulties here uh, at uh, the Buck Foreman Center with our Zoom. So I apologize to anyone that was planning to join and comment publicly on Zoom. Uh, we are here in person, so, or you could send an email. Uh, any comments that you would like read, uh, you can email me at rcurley at portlandct.org and we'll make sure we'll get any comments that you have in the, uh, in the second uh, public comment towards the end of the meeting. So again, I apologize for that and hopefully we'll get back on Zoom as soon as uh, we are able to. So moving on to old business, we have our monthly report from the Committee on Solidarity. I know that April Graves wasn't able to uh, be here with us this evening. I think, Ralph, you have a, an update for us? Yep, uh, April sent me the update. I'll read it. The Committee of Solidarity has updated the resource pamphlet first published in May of 2021. We will be releasing the updated version by web link and few paper copies at the town hall and library. We are also planning our first responders month for this October. We will have an event honoring our community's first responders on October 1st, where we'll be honoring individuals from our police, fire, and public works departments. We will be reaching out to the public schools to have the children participate in a contest to honor the first responders. And we reached out to the River East and they will be running a feature of a department each week in October with a picture and an article. We will be reaching out to each department in the next week or two to coordinate our plans with each of them. Thank you, Ralph. And thank you, April, and to the Committee on Solidarity. All right, the next item on the agenda is potential action on the proposed right to farm ordinance. So we did hold a public hearing er earlier this evening on the right to farm ordinance. I know that this board has spent a lot of time talking about it. Um, Sam Newsom is here this evening with us, and Sam was the individual who first uh, brought this to the board's attention. So I do want to thank you, Sam, uh, for, for doing that. And so I believe we've kind of gone over this in, in a lot of depth. Does, any, does anyone have any comments on this or any discussion before? moving to a potential um, adoption? The only, the only question I have on item B and item C is because we were not on Zoom, it, and you just mentioned a few minutes mm -hmm. ago that there may be some comments in the chat, mm -hmm. Should can we decide this now or should we wait to see if there's any well, comments? I believe we can because a legal notice was published that we have a public hearing that, but that is something that I can't answer a hundred percent because there may it, have been nobody out there to want to comment anyway. I'm just, if there was somebody and they couldn't get through, so are we obliged to have a comment before we approve it. Um, I think, I think with this, we can make, I, I would say we could make a motion. We have to redo it okay. next meeting. We'll, yes, we'll redo it next meeting. No, I just wanted um, to put it out there because I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, no, that's a good question. There. So, but I think <clears throat> in this case, we, we have been open to the public. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, it was through no fault of, of our own, oh, no. but, no, um, so, but that is a good, a good question. And, and I'll look into it. So if, if need be, we can always add it. Yeah, we can always fine. do another public hearing, I suppose. Um, so is there a motion? Make a motion we adopt the uh, right to farm ordinance. Would you like to waive the reading or would you like yeah, to? I, yes, I would like to waive the reading. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd okay. like to waive the reading. Is there a second? I'll second that. 
Okay, a motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion on this? Glad we're doing it. All right. Cool. Yeah, it satisfies one of the items in our plan of conservation and development, so mm -hmm. it's always good to uh, make sure we address it. Thanks. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, growing up in town, there were a number of farms and we grew up with, uh, from Goodrich's Tobacco to Anderson's Farm on Strong's Avenue and Goddard's Farm, and there were, there were a number of them, and it's, they're dwindling, so we've got to try to sell, salvage what we can. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll call the question then. All those in favor of the right to farm ordinance signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Keep in mind, it doesn't change any of our zoning laws. <laughs> Debbie out there, I hear you. Um, all right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is action or possible action on American Rescue Plan funds. Now, this is another. We held a public hearing this evening at 710. I believe it was 723 by the time we got started. But we did hold a public hearing. We discussed this at our last Board of Selectmen meeting. Our town planner was here to discuss the needs of the land use office. And uh, as, as Dan had mentioned, we're one of, I think he said we're the only town that, that does not have online permitting, um, or excuse me, the online GIS system. We're the only town. And we're one of a few towns that don't have online permitting. And certainly we don't have any of those um, records in the land use office digitized which is something, as Dan had mentioned, that they are running out of room in that office. So it's either we buy more file cabinets or we start to think you know, about digitization. So um, let's see, do we have a resolution in here? Yes, mm -hmm. we do. I'll, we do. I'll yes. move it if you'd like to. Yeah, yeah. thank you, John. Okay. Uh, resolution Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, dated August 17, 2022. American Rescue Plan funds land use department improvements. Whereas the Town of Portland is in receipt of American Rescue Plan funds, and whereas up to $10 million of ARPA funds can be used for a wide range of expenses due to the final rule regarding revenue loss, and whereas the town has a need to digitize municipal records in the land use department, update the town's GIS mapping, and convert the permitting process online, and whereas the current estimate of these three items is $120,000, and whereas a public hearing was held on August 17, 2022, by the Portland Board of Selectmen to solicit public comments and questions on the requested use of ARPA funds, now therefore it be resolved that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Portland hereby approves up to $120,000 for digitalizing municipal records in the Land Use Department, updating the Town's GIS mapping, and instituting user-friendly online permitting process. Thank you, John. The motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll, 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 se second. <laughs> I'll second it, Ralph. Okay, there's a fight <laughs> over. Um, any discussion on this? I was just uh, working with Dan the other day, and he brought a file out that was literally this thick. Mm -hmm. um, and it took us quite a while to thumb through everything, and because you had to unfold each page and look through it, so it's gonna make everyone's life a lot easier. Um, now, since this is gonna be doing the online permitting, this is also including them taking credit card payments? Correct, yes. Okay. Yep. And I know Dan had said it was anywhere from six to nine months to get everything done. Was that what he had talked about? What's Most likely, yeah, yeah. It's so I know that the digitization may be um, that's going to be a time-consuming process because right. what this we're going to have to go out to bid for this, and what the company has to do is they have to take all of our records, and you know many of them are stapled or bound. They have to undo all the staples, the the paper clips, and and then they then they scan the images after they do all that and then they have to put everything back together again exactly as it was so it's a very tedious and, and time consuming process and so that's part of it 
and then just the, getting the online permitting uh, and the GIS system, uh, it, it will take a little bit of time, but I, I think that's a reasonable that's time frame. Said, yeah. Yeah. It's good. So, it starts. Yeah. It's good. It gets us to the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> I think it gets us to the 21st century. I, I think we're, that gets that department where it needs to be, that's yeah. for sure. Um, all right, well, I guess we can call for the question. Sure. All those in favor of using American Rescue Plan funds on land use department improvements, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you all. All right. Moving on to appointments and reappointments to boards and commissions. Are there any appointments this evening? Uh, we have not. We don't have any. Okay. So we can move on. Uh, resolution request for waiver of bid requirements, Scranton Communications and Electronics. Now, let me just pull up an email I have. Um, so, I just asked uh, our finance director, Tom Robinson couldn't be here with us this evening, but Tom had asked that we do this because we, this company is who the town has been using for a long time, and according to Tom, no one beats Scranton. Many places won't even try to compete against him. Uh, the waiver states why we use them the proper way. So um, this, is, this is more of a housekeeping matter um, but if anybody has any questions on this, I can uh, go through, because Tom did send me some additional emails on this. Is there, is there any bid requirements for the town, or, or, or we can just waive the bid? There's nothing We can waive the bid, yes. Typically, there's, there are bid requirements. You go out to bid <laughs> and, and do you know, the, whole, the whole thing. But, um, and I do have pricing on this. For the fire chief, the vehicle to outfit, the, and this is to outfit the vehicles with what they need to, um, so we purchase the vehicle and then they get outfitted. And I believe the fire chief vehicle will be around 7,300 to 7,500. The police vehicle will be about 8,000. Um, uh, and that is, and then the public works director vehicle, Tom says, may need to, may need some changes to public works director vehicle so uh because our new our new public works director starts on monday and he needs a vehicle as well to be outfitted so i believe he's going to be getting uh the explorer that um our previous public works director has been using so um when does the fire chief's new vehicle come in do i don't know when the vehicle comes in okay um, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. For the police car, does that include a camera? I believe the cameras are all, are part of. Okay. You know the. Yeah, I think Ryan. I think um, Ronnie said they've already been done. They were installed for the July one implementation date, right? They have. The cameras are have been up and and running for as of July one. Um, that so that included body cameras as well as vehicle cameras. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, it did. This is separate. This is the lights. This is yeah. the, the additional the uh, equipment. Siren. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> that yeah, it needs to be outfitted with. Yeah. Right. Would someone like to introduce the resolution? I'll read it. Resolution Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, August 17, 2022. Request for waiver of bid requirements. Scranton Communications and Electronics, LLC. Whereas the Town of Portland will be purchasing police and fire vehicles, and whereas the police and fire vehicles will need to be outfitted with communication, emergency lighting, and other various miscellaneous items, and whereas this equipment to outfit the police and fire vehicles can be supplied and installed by Scranton Communications and Electronics LLC, and whereas Scranton Communications and Electronics LLC of Middle Haddam, Connecticut has been a longtime vendor and service provider to the town and has provided excellent service at a reasonable cost for police, fire, and public works. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the, in the best interest of the town, 
pursuant to section 1208 subsection 7 of the Portland Charter, the Board of Selectmen hereby waives the bidding requirements of section 1208 of the Portland Charter as it pertains to utilizing Scranton Communications and Electronics LLC as the vendor to outfit and install electronic and communications equipment for police, fire, and other vehicles as needed. In addition, the Board of Selectmen authorizes the first selectman, Ryan J. Curley, to act on behalf of the Town of Portland to enter into any and all agreements with Scranton Communication and Electronics, LLC. All right. I'll second that motion, and I have a question. Sure. Um, you mentioned public works director's vehicles included in that. Mm -hmm. The last paragraph talks about police, fire, and other vehicles as needed, but the, the first couple sentences don't indicate. It just says police and fire vehicles. In that second whereas line, should we add and public works vehicle or vehicles? Um, so let's see. Whereas the police and fire vehicles will need to be outfitted with communication whereas the equipment to outfit the police. my question was similar to that is this just for these three vehicles yes it's a one-time thing it's not it's a one-time this is yeah. just for because from the top vehicles. to the it reads it like three different ways at the top it talks about police and fire vehicles plural mm -hmm. but then in the middle there it talks about we have used them reasonably for police fire and mm -hmm. public works mm -hmm. and then down the bottom it says police fire and other vehicles as needed it's it's got to be tightened opens, up. It opens yeah. it up. Well, I know there's. Okay. So let's see. Whereas the police and fire vehicles will need to be outfitted with communication. Do you have an. Uh, well, Mike, the only thing I'm thinking is your, your first line says we will be purchasing police and fire vehicles. That's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. The next one, <clears throat> whereas the police and fire vehicles and an existing public works vehicle. I was thinking. Okay. We'll need to be outfitted. Okay. And I think that that will cover it. Yeah. I just want to make sure that there wasn't a question why we didn't write. Okay. And is there a specific number of police cars? One. One. One, one, one police car, one fire vehicle, and then the public works vehicle that we already that already exists. Um, so there's a set amount for this particular contract. Correct. For one time. Well, it's not a yes. Correct. Um, so are you making a motion to yeah I'll, I'll yeah I'll make I'll, I'll make a motion to amend the language in line two now mm -hmm. we're just talking about being single vehicles mm -hmm. do we want to say whereas one police one fire vehicle and one existing public works vehicle will need to be outfitted I think that's that tightens it up okay um, one police one fire not, and it's more and specific. Yeah, and one existing public works vehicle. Yeah. Uh, one. Okay. I I have no problem with that. If, so you're making that motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Okay. Mike seconded. All right. Any further discussion? Just just a quick question. Um, I mean, this is is not a, a big amount, but have we been using these guys for? Four Five years, years, ten years, four years, forty. Okay, for that long. Yeah. Ever since I've been in the fire department. Yeah, because I've seen the name the constantly mm -hmm. since the father was young. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, and as as I, I think I mentioned, Tom had sent me an email where he said that you know no one's close on this, not even you know a little bit. So. Yeah. Um, so and I and I do trust Tom when it comes to when it comes to numbers. It, <laughs> Tom says, "Yeah." <laughs> then I I definitely uh, think that's the way to go. So, um, all right. Any other comments or discussion? All right. So all those in favor of the resolution as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. The next item we have is there's another resolution in your packet, and this is the yellow paper. And this is similar to the resolution that we did recently regarding the track. Excuse me, this is 
I'm getting all of our projects. We have a lot of project, projects going on, and this, this resolution is authorizing me to be able to sign the contract with DEEP to enter into our agreement to receive our $300,000 grant for our riverfront park and trail project. So if someone would like to uh, introduce and move the resolution beginning with resolved. I'll do it. Um, so it's an authorizing resolution of the Board of Selectmen of Portland, Connecticut. Resolved that the town of Portland may enter into with and deliver to the state of Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection any and all documents which it deems to be necessary or appropriate for a grant of $300,000 for the Portland Riverfront Park and Trail Project. And be it further resolved that Ryan J. Curley, as first selectman of the town of Portland, is authorized and directed to execute and deliver any and all documents on behalf of the town of Portland and to do and perform all acts and things which he deems to be necessary or appropriate to carry out the terms of such documents. Is there a second? I oh. second. Okay, Sean. All right, and we'll open it to discussion. Questions, comments? Um, this is just for the new property by Telcon, correct? Correct. This is, yes. So we had to do this exact same uh, resolution for the um, track money that we received from the bond council as well. So whenever and I'm finding this out recently, when the Bond Council awards uh, municipality money, it then goes to, it, it gets, um, gets sent to a corresponding state agency. And so, because this is a park and trail project, this is going to be overseen by DEEP. Just like previously, our water project is being overseen by DPH, and our track project is being overseen by DEEP. So this allows uh, the town of Portland to enter into that agreement and we can then get our contract on this. And it is, it is good, uh, the state has been, um, has been really, really helpful with this, uh, moving this along. And um, you know, I just wanna say thank you to the state of Connecticut for helping us uh, get started on this project because it, it is very exciting. Any other questions, comments? Just a question. What the, where we have our concerts, what do we call that? That is the, <laughs> the riverfront part. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's why I, you know, I, I'm always trying to look at these from the perspective of being somebody reading it that doesn't know what it means. I had to explain and, it. And reading it the way it sits right there, it sounds like we're using $300,000 for the park down on Middlesex yes, Avenue. Yes. So maybe we just need to say something in there uh, Riverfront Park and Trail project uh, um, adjacent to Tommaso's property well, or something. Well, that's why I asked, is this just for the Tommaso property? Access. Right. So, okay, you guys, <laughs> you guys are 100% correct. And, and, and actually, I had this same exact conversation with uh, Tom Robinson yesterday when I was talking about this resolution. And um, the state, we, there's some paperwork that needs to be filled out, and I'm filling out the paperwork. And now that we've been awarded the grant, I, you know, I was saying, well, can we maybe tighten up the name of the project because it is a little confusing for exactly those reasons. Why are we calling it, isn't it a boat launch too? Well, we're not there yet. So, okay, but I, because that's the so, thing that would differentiate. So this is, so the reason why this is worded exactly the way it's worded. Because that's is what they're calling it? Because that's what the project was approved as. That's what the that's what the project is named, and so uh, Tom felt that to you know it's to change the name after we we already have the money um, is. It's Could we just say the report the Riverfront Park and Trail project on a parcel adjacent to Tommaso property or, or on Airline Avenue. or Airline Avenue or something? So it's located Airline located Avenue. off of Airline yeah. Avenue. Yeah, we can do that. Um, Comma. So would you airline say comma? Avenue. You know, after no. on, a, on a parcel yeah. land adjacent to Airline Avenue. Okay. Because I, I just I, I envision somebody not understanding this, reading this, and saying, "What are they giving three hundred thousand yeah. dollars to the park for?" Just yeah, they're money. Adjacent to Airline Avenue. Airline Avenue. 
Sorry to keep picking these apart, but no, <laughs> I just want to make sure. I mean, it, it's a it's a fair point. Um, that was my I, question I asked Mike. I said, <laughs> "What's the park down yeah. in, on Brownstone? Right? Yeah. It's Riverfront Park, right?" <laughs> so, it is. <laughs> that's fine. I think that covers it. Yeah, that's good. I just I want to make sure we're. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, John has made a motion to amend the resolution. I'll second that. Sean has seconded it. Uh, so, did you get that, Sharon? You have the wording? Okay. All those in, uh, so I guess we'll call the question. All those in favor of the resolution as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. I just want to make sure I, I got to give this to. I don't think it changes the complexion of it. It's just for, for clarification purposes. That's yeah. All. Yeah, no, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Um, we need to come up with a new name in the future. <laughs> uh, Riverfront 1 and Riverfront so, 2. So, I know. I, it's, um, oh, it's a funny story with all that. I'll have to tell you guys another time. But, uh, all right, we'll move on to uh, status and committee reports. Uh, I'll, I just have a, a couple updates on some of our ongoing projects just to give you an update on, on where we are. I, I heard some good news from Ty and Bon on our uh, remediation project on Brownstone Avenue. It looks like our uh, company, ECR Enviro Consultants and Recyclers, will be beginning their remediation work the second week of September. So that's a little earlier than we had thought last time. And in addition, both ECR and Ty and Bond will be on site tomorrow doing some preliminary work. So that's exciting, you know, that's, that's moving along. So I want to let you know that. And our right. water. Before you move on, what's their rough estimate for timeline? Uh, the remediation will take a, about three weeks once they start. It's okay. pretty quick. Okay. So that's, yeah, once they get in there, they'll be done. I want to say it's like the second or third week in October when they should be finished by, something okay. like that. So our water project, I did receive our preliminary contract from DEP. Um, as of yesterday, I received that and I, and I did sign the contract after review. It then has to go back to the state to be signed and then we have an executed contract. So we are, we are very close to that, I think it just, it's gonna, you know, it just has to make its way to the right person so they can sign it. But, but that has moved along and, and we're very close on that. Uh, in addition, uh, the same thing happened with our track project at, um, for the, our high school. I received a contract, I signed the contract, and now uh, I checked with the state and I guess these go to the attorney, the AG's office, the attorney general's office, and they will sign it from there. And I'm told it's normally like a week or two, you know, to get that signed. But once we do that, um, then we are able to enter into our contracts. We, um, we did have our RFP on the track come in, and I believe there is a, uh, a vendor that was selected, but we can't enter into that agreement until we get this signed contract. So it is coming. And, so things are starting to move quickly. Is here. that just an engineering vendor? Or that's that just, sorry, that's the engineering. Okay. Yep. And that's, those are the projects that I have updates on now. And, and, and having been out of town for a few days, I drove by Brainerd Place and it's looking good. There's a lot of, looks like there's a lot of action going on down there. Yeah, it's yeah, moving. They have a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, we have to have a meeting well, every week then. Well, I guess I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, one of the things I update is economic development. So certainly there was lots of discussion about Brainerd and obviously there is another planning and zoning meeting with them tomorrow. And I know a bunch of us were listening on the last one. So I'm sure there'll be more participation tomorrow. Um, other than that, the other thing, uh, EDC is looking is trying to do a, uh, a business survey that they could get out to the businesses to try to get some feedback about what the town is uh, doing well or needs to do better at. Um, they talked about this a little while ago, but then it got sidetracked by some other stuff they were doing. So 
They're shooting to take care of that and make that happen. Um, looking at Park and Rec, their meeting uh, for this month was canceled. Two things to note is that um, the last concert will be held on Tuesday at 6 p.m. It's a makeup, so it may not show in old the signs around. So there is a makeup concert at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, and their summer camp programs are all uh, culminating this week, I believe. So um, another summer completed. In the books. Uh, there is no library meeting this month. They've, uh, they've canceled it for this month. With regards to water, um, I guess a few things you just mentioned about water is that uh, they continue to do a real good job of trying to balance the water between MDC and the well. That's a, <laughs> that's a challenge, but they're doing a really good job with it. Um, as uh, Ryan noted about our water source, uh, actually, well, yeah, we're moving along with that one. Um, uh, they mentioned a few of the things they're doing in terms of maintenance. I think they had one or two other leaks that they had to deal with recently, but they are uh, doing some uh, maintenance work they're, they're, that they're working on. And um, there was a good amount of discussion with regards to uh, delinquent accounts. So we're talking about what, that can, what can be done to try to collect on the delinquent accounts that are out there. And uh, long range capital, I don't Ralph, think they met. We're off on the meeting, uh, oh. the water stuff. We have uh, the, the meter company that's going to come on the 13th mm. new presentation. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that there was. Um, we've had discussions about trying to look at a, a way to get um, the meters. They are as they continue to go along and replace meters, but the discussion was looking at a uh, solution where we could do a do the remaining meters potentially, depending on what it would cost. And so they have a company coming in to do it's a demo. The, ultrasonic, the, hydrogen, the, ultrasonic meters. the remote reading machines, yes, right? Yes, through a mesh network. Yeah. So yeah. they're replacing all of the meters. Yeah, the intent would to replace all the meters. It would uh, reduce the man work that is required in order to read them because they could be read, re read remotely. So it would uh, open up uh, a body that, that's made to drive around the town half the year. So, so the next Water and Sewer Commission meeting would like to invite the Board of Selectmen to come to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's, uh, I believe, and we'll have more information at our, at our next meeting on this, but we do have a tentative date of September 13th for a special joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Water and Sewer Commission, and that will be here in the Buck Foreman Room at 7 p.m., I believe. Correct, yeah. And so we'll we'll get that posted but but that will be a presentation on this uh water uh reading company that camp does the struck. what's the name of the company camp there? struck camp struck camp struck camp yeah. c-a-m-p k-a-m k-a-m yeah. okay camp struck yeah okay so september 13th yeah and the only last thing to mention about actually about water is that um we're hoping that when the, the books are, are set are completed for the previous fiscal year that will show favorably with water the water and sewer budgets. We believe we will, so we will see what happens. Um, and I am site, but yesterday's meeting or yeah, yesterday's or Monday's whatever it was, um, seemed to show that it was, nothing was on it, so I think it was canceled. I'm gonna go on that belief. <laughs> so and that covers it. Any other status and committee reports? All right, we'll move to public comment. Is there any anyone in the audience? Okay, and is there anyone in the chat? Let me just see. Um, uh, they've gotten a, a message before, and I think you're going to address okay. that just with our. Um, and our CERT team and our yep. first responders, so we want to make sure we include them. Um, so we'll move to Board of Selectmen general and informal discussion. Um, town garage, fire system, fire alarm. Mm -hmm. Anything progressing with that? 
No. I mean, we should, but we haven't, you know, there's, there hasn't been any progress on that right now. And is there a reason why? I thought we, well, we discussed this earlier. For I know, but this was discussed back several months ago when we talked about there was money that we could finally do the project. Yeah, I'm confused because I thought at that time Bob had talked about there was a source that would be used for it, and then I will. Uh, I, haven't heard follow, I have not. Could, I have not heard. So it's important. Uh, Every single truck hey, we own, yeah. and piece of heavy you, equipment. You, you have a beautiful storage facility out there, but every piece of equipment we own, like you said, Sean, is in one building. God help us if anything ever happened out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, in particular, 